Tars Unlimited Leader Spotlight. As usual, we've been going through the entirety of the leaders in a set, this time being set 2, and we're going to talk about some cards that look pretty cool with those leaders. Disclaimers first. This is not a meta analysis. Every card I talk about in today's video will not be perfect cards to use with these leaders, just some personal opinions. And if I talk about a, a card that you don't think is great for this leader, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your opinions on the matter. Secondly, and most importantly, not every card I want to talk about here is going to make its way on today's video. If I talk about a card and I completely forget to mention a card that you really think is really great with this leader, let me know in the comment section below. Again, I'd love to discuss what you believe is great cards with this leader, or any cards that I may have missed or forgotten about to put in this video. That being said, let's talk about Moff Gideon. Moff Gideon is a command and villainy leader. He is imperial and official. He has an ability. Action. Exhaust him. Attack with a unit that costs three or less, and if it's attacking another unit, it gets plus one power for that attack. For a lot of reasons, this is a very underwhelming ability. A lot of people look at this and think it's pretty bad. We've seen um, uh, unit leaders like IG-88 being also bottom tier for having an ability similar to this, an ability that just gives plus one attack buff. And yeah, you can win with him, of course. You can win with Gideon. But this ability does not set anybody's world on fire. As most leaders do, he has an epic action. If you control five or more resources, deploy this leader and flip him. Then he goes on to his other side. He gets into play. He's a 3-6. And he has Overwhelm. Now, this is kind of the point of the deck. Overwhelming your opponent with Overwhelm. You attack units into other units. And you try to overwhelm the daily damage to the base by clearing out your opponent's board. He has another ability here, in which this is what makes him a really cool leader. This is why you play him. Each friendly unit that costs 3 or less gets plus 1 attack and gains overwhelm while attacking an enemy unit. Super cool ability. This is the reason why you stuff your deck with above average amounts of 3 cost units, 3 or less units. And you kind of swarm the field with them and then you just flip him in once you have a bunch of them on the field. They all attack, hopefully. Um, hopefully they don't just get incinerated by your opponent's forces, but they all attack for a decent amount into your opponent's units, knocking them off the board and dealing overwhelm damage to your opponent's base, clearing out their units and dealing damage to the base. A good card to talk about here is a card that showed up in the Star Deck card. It's a card created for Gideon. In lore, it's his personal sort of guard, his personal unit. It's a three cost, phase three, dark trooper. Three, three, imperial droid trooper, sentinel. Obviously, sentinel's a really powerful effect. Having it on cards is good, and early game Sentinel is even more important because it can shut down your opponents, some, some of your opponents' more early game plays. It also means your opponent's going to have to attack you with their units, weakening their units, so that when you attack into their units, your overwhelm can hit for a little bit harder into your opponent's base, of course. Then you have a second effect here. When combat damage is dealt to this unit, remember he has Sentinel, so your opponent will be attacking him. Well, might be, unless they decide to get him rid of him in a different way. Give an experience token to this unit. Obviously, the goal is to try to have this build up multiple experience tokens, but more in but in the highest likelihood, he gets attacked once, he gets experience tokens, he attacks, he dies. Probably how it's going to end up happening, but if you do it right, he can get attacked, gain an experience token, swing in for four, but you use Morph Gideon's ability to make it a five swing, and then you get another experience token, and then, you know, you can go off to the races from there. But, obviously, he's not going to survive for very long point is he's going to be able to get a decent amount of build up and if you play your cards right he may stick around for a bit with uh, two or three experience tokens on him next card i want to talk about is this season short trooper it's a set one card that got reprinted in set two starter deck two calls two three it's going to have an ability that is really important for getting in whilst you control six or more resources this card gets plus two attack now obviously if you give him overwhelm that's going to be really important as well as he works with gideon's ability the whole point here, especially with this card, is that he's going to become even more powerful later in the game. When you're playing a lot of early game cards, you want to have cards in your deck that, can, or, that are going to gain power as the game progresses. Another good uh, example of this is Privateer Crew. Two cost, two, two, but you can smuggle them into play for six. And when you use the smuggle ability to put them into play, give them three experience tokens. If you don't know what smuggling does, if you put this card face down as a resource um, during your turn as an action, you can pay its smuggling cost, in this case six, and you can then play it from your resource row, replacing the resource with the random top card from your deck. It's really cool. And it's a great way to make resourcing easier on the decision side. But also, sometimes you're not going to have um, the ability to play this card. And sometimes it's not going to be really worth it. 2-2 two, two for 2. 
we just saw the season sword trooper it's a two three that can become more valuable later in the game but if you pay six at any point in time whenever you may need it you can get a five five unit which is obviously is a little below rate six for five five but at the same time it also can maybe just pop out whenever you need it and your opponent won't be able to expect it that maybe they're playing a hand destruction or something or you just have low cards in your hand and then bam there you go a unit from your resources though Another cool card to take a look at is General Tag, 2 cost 2-2. Two, two. He's going to be able to, when you play him, give experience tokens to up to 3 trooper units. Obviously, if you play this card, you have to be going all in with the troopers. But if you are going all in troopers, he works perfectly into Gideon's game plan. Homestead Militia works for the same reason as the Season Storm Trooper, 3 cost 3-4. Three, While you control 6 or more resources, he gains Sentinel. Obviously, Sentinel is really going to be really important. And of course, he's a card that's going to have early game benefits, but also late game benefits as well. And then the Outland TIE Fighters, a space unit, two costs to one, a little cheaper, a little weaker, but when you play him, you can give an experience to another unit that costs three or less, so he's going to be able to really help out your strategy in the long run. Then we have the Heavy Fighter, four costs, three, three, overwhelmed by nature. He doesn't work with Gideon's ability, but he does work with Gideon's play game plan, overwhelming your opponent, and then when also when he attacks, he makes also another friendly unit, and if you do, this unit gets plus three attack for this attack. If you're playing a lot of cheaper units, you're going to have a lot of units that ultimately are attacking for less than three. And any unit that attacks for less than three is a perfect example of a unit that you should exhaust with the heavy fighter to give him plus three. And that's going to allow him to attack for six, overwhelm into your opponent for maybe three, four damage on your opponent's space, as well as knocking off whatever unit or early game unit they may have on the field. Then finally, the finalizer. He is going to be a big boy, just a big unit that you may want to drop on the field. Obviously, although you're playing a lot of cheap units, you do want to have some bigger units if push comes to shove, and the finalizer is a really good option. 11 calls, 11, 11, or a really interesting option. Overwhelm, of course, and then when you play him, you can choose any number of friendly units. Each of those units captures an enemy non-leader unit in the same arena. Um, as for events go, we can take a look at Moment of Glory. It's going to allow you to buff your your own units three calls plus four plus four tactical advantage is the same idea one calls plus two plus two i'm personally not quite sure which, which one of these cards are better tactical advantage has just by pure math better value one for two is better than three for four but at the same time three for four could be the number you need to make whatever units you're using just strong enough to do whatever you need them to do so sometimes moment of glory might have its place Emperor's Legion, two costs. Return each unit in your discard pile that was defeated is faced to your hand. You're going to be playing a lot of cheap units. They're going to be dying because they're going to be attacking other people's units. You're probably going to have a lot of your units end up dying, and this is a great way to get them back if you need that to happen. Overall, Barrage put a lot of work in in set one. Five costs. Give a friendly unit plus two plus two for this phase. Then it deals damage equal to its power divided as you choose amongst any number of other units. This is really important. It's going to allow you to weaken your opponent's units so that when you swing them with your units, you can deal a little extra overwhelm damage to your opponent's base. Tag Pattern Delta is sort of an interesting card here. You have to play either, either play, be playing double command or you have to pay this extra extra two costs making a five cost card but if you do you are kind of playing a swarm deck with a bunch of weaker units make them more powerful is going to be really important giving a friendly unit plus three plus three for the phase giving another friendly unit plus two plus two for the phase giving a third friendly unit plus one plus one for the phase could be what you need to buff your units to make bigger plays happen on some of the upgrades you can be playing uh one cost bounty bounty hunters quarry a lot of the bounty cards I'm going to talk about in today's video are only here because of the simple fact you're already going to be attacking your opponent's units a lot. Collecting bounties on them can be a nice bonus if you want to go down that route. Bounty Hunter's Quarry on their hand is actually a really good card in Gideon in particular. Because if you attach it to a unit and then kill that unit, you can collect the bounty, search the top 5 cards of your deck, or 10 cards instead if the unit that this is attached to is unique. And, for a, and you search for a unit that costs 3 or less and then you can play it for free. You're going to be playing a lot of 3 or less units in this deck. So, this is going to be perfect for your war game plan as Gideon. Traitorous is another upgrade in the game, 5 costs. It's going to allow you to, um, uh, when this unit upgrade attached to a leader, non-leader unit that costs 3 or less, take control of that unit. When this upgrade becomes unattached from the unit, they only take control of it. The important part of this upgrade here is the simple fact that you want 3 or less units. So, getting them from your opponent can, be, um, can swing it in your favor in a big way. That being said, there's a lot of upgrade hate going to be going around with a lot of more upgrades coming into this set so maybe playing a five force upgrade that your opponent can easily just knock off with a confiscate and take back control of it is not something you necessarily want to be doing 
Moving on to our next aspect, we're going to be taking a look at Vigilance, starting off with a Darth Death Trooper. Three cost, three three. We've seen this in set one. It's going to be reprinted in set two. When you play it, you can deal two damage to a friendly ground unit and two damage to an enemy ground unit. If you're going in with Grit, because you're going to be dealing a lot of combat damage with your units, Grit is an important thing you can do. This is going to help with those Grits. But also, it's just going to allow you to deal some damage to your opponent unit. It's just a generally good card. The clients are set two cards, three cost, two, three, sh three, two, five, sorry. Shielded, action, exhaust him, choose a unit for this phase, it gains bounty, heal five damage from a base. Remember, the unit you give bounty to needs to die, and then you can collect that bounty. The important thing here is it's a cheaper unit you can use your ability with, but also, it can give bounties, so it, when you're going in to kill that weaker unit that you just, that your opponent has, you exhaust this guy, you give that unit bounty, you swing him from your units, you kill him, and then you inhale damn five damage from your base. Uh, it just kind of writes itself. And you can even go in with a bigger unit like Supreme Leader Snoke. It costs 6-6. Six, six. thing about you, Snoke here is that each enemy non-leader unit gets minus 2, minus 2. If you're attacking a lot of units, then you're going to be taking a lot of combat damage back. Reducing the amount of combat damage that you get back is really important. But also, when they lose that minus 2 health, that's extra overwhelm damage you can be potentially doing to your opponent's base. So that's really important as well. Obviously, of course, you're also going to need some big units to drop later in the game. So it's just an, uh, a cool option that you can go with. Um, Imbo is a three cost unit, three, four. Um, here, when you this unit completes an attack, if the defender was defeated, heal up to two damage from a unit. Again, you're going to be attacking a lot into other people's units. Getting th benefits from doing so with um, this ability here is something you're going to be looking for with Moth. Gideon. Here we have another Gideon. 5 cost Gideon Hask. 5-5. Five, five. When an enemy unit is defeated, give an experience token to a friendly unit for the same reason as we talked about Embo. You're going to be defeating opponent's units. You might as well get some benefits for doing so. Then we also have some space units to look at. 2 cost Distant Patroller. 2-1. When defeated, you may give a shield token to a blue unit. Shield tokens are going to be really important. If you're going to be doing a lot of combat damage back and forth, being able to take a lot more damage is going to be really important for obvious reasons, but also, this unit is a good thing. You can play it, swing in with it, it's going to die. Then, of course, you can give a shield token to a one of your other units, so it has that sort of thing going for it. For some events, we have the Sardec event that's, again, made for Gideon. Four costs, defeat a non-leader unit that costs three or less. For each upgrade that, that was on that unit, give an experience token to a friendly unit. Now, this ability is really good for knocking off your opponent's units. But also you can use it on your own units if push comes to shove to kill one of your weaker units to buff one of your other units that may be a little stronger or a little more healthy or something like that. If you know your opponent might be attacking to this unit to deal because it's really weak and it's going to die, you can just knock it off yourself. Hopefully if it has a lot of upgrade tokens or shield tokens or something like that, you can buff one of your other units. But usually you're going to be using it to defeat your opponent's units. Covert Strength is really important, or really cool card here. One cost, heal two damage from a unit and give it an experience token. You can also smuggle in for three instead. So it has a little bit of leeway on how much you, or when you want to use it. But also healing from units, you're going to be dealing a lot of combat damage. You want to heal, try to keep it around for a little longer. Experience tokens also kind of gives you more health, more damage. It just plays into the game plan and it's a cheap event. Make an opening, three cost. Given a unit, minus two, minus two from this phase, heal two damage from your base. Giving your opponents minus two, minus two means again, you're going to be taking less damage while you're fighting them, dealing more damage potentially with Overwhelm. Brutal Additions, upgrade, two cost, one, two, uh, plus one, plus two. Action, if an enemy unit was defeated this phase, upgrade, play this upgrade from your discard pile. You're going to be defending a lot of enemy units. You're going to be able to play this from your discard pile. A lot of the, uh, for, a lot of the time, you're going to get the chance to play this from your discard pile. And so... It has that going for it. Then again, some bounty units, um, upgrades, top target, heal four damage from an enemy, from a unit or or base. If this unit is unique, deal six dam heal six damage instead. Then the other one is public enemy bounty. Give a shield token to a unit. Just generic bounty abilities. If you want to go down that bounty route, then there are some good options here for you to do that with. And then we also have entrenched two cost plus three plus three. This unit attached unit can attack bases. But you want to be overwhelming your opponent anyway to deal extra damage to their base. So throwing this on a unit that has overwhelm is going to give them a nice stat buff. And you just bulldoze through a weaker unit or something. And still deal maybe 3-4 damage to your opponent's base anyway. So this is actually a really cool card in this deck. On to Aggression. 
We have a lot of great options for Gideon in aggression because of his game plan of overwhelm and buffing his unit's power. One great example of this is the Death Watch Loyalist. Three calls, three, three. It has grit and overwhelm. Just a generically good unit. Django Fett is also a rare unit for cost, though he doesn't work with Gideon's ability, his abilities doesn't work with the green plan. 3 power, 6 health, while attacking a unit with a bounty, this unit gets plus 3 power and gains overwhelm. When this unit attacks and defeats a unit, you get to draw a card. Um, this Wookiee, Kurzen 10, 5 cost, 3, 7. When you play him, if an enemy unit has a bounty, you can ready him immediately, leading to your ability to evade an attack with him, but also, you can... When he attacks, you get to choose a ground unit, and you may deal 1 damage to it for each damage on this unit. So, he has a form of grit, but that only works on attack, and it's really just a really aggressive piece that can actually clear out some of your opponent's pieces pretty easily. Also, you have the First Legion Stormtrooper, set 1 card, 2 cost, 2, 3. While attacking a damaged unit, this unit gets plus 2 power and gains overwhelm. Works with the Gwydion's ability, but also works just in general with the game plan allowing him to swing in if you use Gideon's ability for 5 and Overwhelm onto a damaged unit. The 5th Brother is also another set 1 card, 3, 2, 4, worth the Gideon's ability. He gains Raid 1 and for each damage counter on him, another pseudo grit ability. And then also on attack you may deal 1 damage to this unit and deal and 1 damage to another ground unit. Allows you to buff his first ability but as well as doing a little ping damage around the board so your Overwhelm's hit may be a little harder. Benthic 2 Tubes are another great unit from set 1, 1 cost 2, 2, on attack, another friendly unit gains raid 2. The Punishing 1 is a really cool unit, 3 cost 3, 4, when an upgraded enemy unit is defeated, you may ready this unit, use this ability only once per round. And if you're going for the whole bounty game plan with Gideon, then this ability works amazingly, and even if you're not, it can trigger from time to time. The Starwing Scout is a 3 cost 4, 1. And he has the win defeated if you have initiative draw two cards. The ability to play this guy, maybe claim initiative, then as your first action, attack with him with Gideon, swinging in for five, potentially overwhelm if Gideon is in his leader unit form, and then he dies because so he only has one health and you get to draw two cards, is not a bad trade. As for events, headhunting, two cost, attack with three units. They can attack bases for these attacks, and each bounty hunter that attacks his way gets plus two power. Obviously, this works really good with Gideon if he's in leader unit form, but also works really general if you're going for a bounty sort of game plan. We also have Bravado, 5 cost. If you defeated an enemy unit this phase, this event costs 2 less to play. You also can ready a unit. You're going to be defeating a lot of enemies. You're going to be able to play this for 3 quite a, few, quite a bit, quite often, and you're going to ready a unit for 3 cost. And it's going to have no real limit to its ability. It's not actually the greatest card with Gideon. There's definitely better options if you want to ready your units. But it is a pretty good option. Provision Fire, 1 cost, attack with the unit against Saboteur for this attack. And if it's a trooper, which you might be playing a lot of, depending on what type of game plan you're going for, it gets plus 2 attack for this attack. Ruthlessness is an upgrade, 1 cost, attach unit gains when this unit attacks and defeats the unit. Deal 2 damage to the defending player's base, and it gives just a generic plus 2 power. It kind of just goes with the whole getting game plan and general aggression tactics. Death Mark is one of those bounties. Again, if you're not going for the bounty game plan, don't really worry too much about it. But if you are, bounties draw 2 cards, as well as skill target. Deal 2 damage to a base, and if this unit is unique, deal 3 damage instead. The Van Burnt Flamethrower, 3 cost, plus 1, plus 1. Attached to a non-vehicle unit, attached unit gains on attack, you may deal 3 damage divided to choose among enemy ground units. A good way to spread some damage to make your overwhelm potentially hit a whole lot harder. 1 cost, 1 power, 4 health, on attack, exhaust a defender. It's just a really cool card that's going to allow you to not only get benefits from attacking other units, but also it's going to allow you to hopefully tap out some of your opponents to more powerful or even more annoying units so they can't use maybe whatever ability they may have or whatever game their or really could save your save your life in a lot of situations reducing the amount of damage you may be taking on your turn if you're going for the bounty game plan then the hunter of the hexian brood is really good three cost for three while an enemy unit has bounty you give this unit this unit gains shielded which means when you play him you just put immediately put a shield token on it dj is a really interesting unit three calls three five smuggle in for seven when you play him using the smuggle ability you can take control of an enemy resource when this unit leaves play the resources owner takes control of it, 
it's going to it's going to fill the same role of a lot of cards we talked about cards that you can play early but also can have benefit later in the game if you choose to go that route and still work with good Gideon's ability chain code collector for cost for two ambush and also when he attacks if the defender has bounty it gains minus four power which means hopefully if he's going for another unit with weaker attack or if you put a bounty on a weaker unit he can actually just survive that unit that attack without taking any damage which is really cool boba fett is a really powerful unit from set one he's still powerful now in set two three calls three five on attack if you can tr if this unit is attacking an exhausted unit that didn't interplay this round deal three damage to the defender it's going to allow you to it's really good on attack and it's really good attacking another unit, which means uh, it's going to be really good in good Gideon. Smuggler Starfighter, 3 cost, 2-2. Two, two. When played, if you control another underworld unit, you may give an enemy unit minus 3 for this phase. It's not exactly the greatest thing in Gideon, because you have to go into an underworld sort of game plan, which you can do, but it's going to be a lot harder and a lot more out of the way. But if you do go that route, it is a pretty interesting card, especially since you can smuggle it in for a pretty cheap smuggle cost of 4. Strafing Gunship is set one card for cost three four. This unit can attack units in the ground arena. While this attacking unit, while this unit is attacking a ground unit, the defender gets minus two power. It's going to allow you to do what you always want to be doing, uh, dealing combat damage and not taking a lot of damage back. On to events, bounty posting is a one cost event. It's really great. You search your deck for a bounty upgrade, reveal it and draw it, and you may play the upgrade while playing its cost of cost of course. If you're going for the upgrade game plan with Gideon. It's one of something you might really want to invest in, or rather you might really want to look into, the fact that it's going to allow you to find those bounties, to put them onto your opponent's unit, so you can attack those units, so you can get those bounties. Asteroid Sanctuary is another really good card that kind of works pretty, like, really well with Gideon at face value to cost Exhausted Enemy Unit, but also give a shield token to a friendly unit that costs 3 or less. A lot of your units are going to be costing 3 or less when you're playing Gideon, so there's that. There's a bunch of bounty cards you can take a look at if in Cunning. You can do Wanted. Bounty, ready to friendly resources. Enticing reward, bounty, search the top 10 cards of your deck for two non-unit cards. Reveal them, draw them. Or you can do irrefusable, unrefusable offer. You can only attach to a non-leader unit. And then it says bounty, play this unit for free. It enters, play ready. At the start of the root group phrase, defeat it. All these can be working, can are good options if you're going for the bounty option. Because these are the few ways you can add bounties to your opponent's units. If you're not going for the bounty option, then all these kind of don't really have any face value option uh, synergy with Gideon. So upgrade Snapshot Reflex is one cost, one plus one plus one. When play, you may attack in t with the attached unit. It's just going to buff a unit, and it's also going to get you an extra attack. It's going to be really powerful when Gideon, of course, is in his leader unit form, but it can also have a lot of good resources or um, uses, even if you're still on the leader face form. Let's end this video off with the, just the villainy cards that go well with Gideon. Starting off with the Incinerator Trooper, it's a 2 cost 2 2 Imperial Trooper. While attacking this unit, deals combat damage before the Defender. A generic ability we see in a lot of different card games, but this ability works particularly well with Gideon. With his ability to attack with these units, smaller units, into other units that are just as small, maybe a little bit bigger, but at finish them off, maybe does some overwhelm damage, maybe attack for 3 with Gideon's ability, but the important part is that hopefully they'll be able to survive that attack using this effect here. Ruthless Assassin is a 2 cost 3-3 three, three, with Overwhelm naturally, so it's a little bit better statted than the Incinerator Trooper, but it does have a big downside, or other A downsides. When you play him, you have to deal 2 damage to a friendly unit. Now, if you're playing a Grit deck, this can absolutely be a positive, but at the end of the day, this is a negative to make up for the fact that it's a 3-3 three, three Overwhelm, but it's not really a big deal, because we kind of want a 3-3 three, three Overwhelm anyway, and we don't mind that little extra damage we might have to take to get it. To end this video off, let's talk about Gideon's Light Cruiser, his specialty unit. 8 cost, 7, 8, Overwhelm, and when you play him, if you control Moff Gideon as a leader or as a unit, you may um, you may play a dark, a villainy rather, unit that costs 3 or less from your hand or discard pile for free. This is absolutely a busted ability. Well, it's actually a really good ability. Let's change it to that. That absolutely works completely and utterly well with Gideon's game plan. I mean, it's made for the character, and there's really not much more I need to say after that. But that's going to be it for today's video. That's me for the first Leader Spotlight for the second set of the Stars Unlimited training card game. Come back tomorrow for the next video, in which we're going to take a look at the Mandalorian and all the upgrade shenanigans he gets into. Hope to see you guys there. 
Well, that's going to be all for now, but if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys go ahead and watch some of our other videos that we've made on this channel. Also, give this video a like if you thoroughly enjoyed it. And of course, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our future content. And I hope to see you guys back at the roost.